So what's the one thing people love the most? Well, they want a product, in this case, a pair of bookshelf speakers that give them the best bang for their buck. Don't you want the peace of mind that what you purchase is a quality product at a fair and reasonable price? Today's your lucky day. I'm gonna be doing all the heavy lifting for you so you don't have to. And by the end of this episode, you will have learned whether or not the Klipsch RP600M version two will give you the value and performance that you deserve. I know, I know, I'm late to the party. Clips released the second version of the 600Ms over seven, almost eight months ago, and I'm only now talking about them. Well, welcome to the channel, everyone. I'm Mike on audio, and I'm so ready to get into these speakers. It was the last Rocky Mountain Audio Fest in 2019 when I listened to the first version of the 600Ms, and I, I was very impressed. I had a chance to listen to them again a few months later, but I never got a chance to spend quality time with them. All is not lost though. I still vividly remember the sound well enough to give you a great comparison, and I want to determine whether this is a serious upgrade from their predecessor, or just the same thing with some marketing fluff sprinkled on top. Straight away, I like the way the new versions look. They have a nice, clean, minimalist vibe. Very cool. But there is one gripe, guys. This may just be a me thing, but what happened to the piano black gloss finish? Clips address one of the versions of the original RP600M in a stunning piano black for a short while and then canceled them to move towards the black and walnut wood finish, which, which is nice, but it's not piano black gloss. Now, if I may, for perhaps a special edition or limited run, do a version of these new ones in a piano black gloss finish. You have my word that they will sell. If you think they will sell, guys, if you prefer that sexy piano black, smash the like button and comment below to get Klipsch's attention. Let's take a look at the speaker front and back and see what we're getting ourselves into. At a quick glance, it's debatable whether you would notice a substantial difference between the new and old models of these speakers. However, there have been adjustments and in my opinion, improvements with specific features that I feel are noteworthy. The six and a half inch Cerametallic woofers have been improved by increasing the size of the voice coils and adding aluminum shorting rings. This change, according to Klipsch, leads to a more linear bass response with less distortion and improved power handling. As a result, this makes the speaker's performance faster and more accurate. The speaker is still a two-way design, so that hasn't changed. It still offers the rear Tractrix port, which I always felt was a unique way to do a port. <laughs> Klipsch claims this port design does have a positive influence on the sound quality itself. I think it's cool looking though. In this new version, the one inch vented titanium tweeter is placed inside a larger silicone Tractrix horn waveguide to provide better sound dispersion. This may have been one of the changes, one of the aesthetic changes you may have noticed is this much larger waveguide than its predecessor. Around the back of the speaker, you will also see a huge change that I feel was for the better. Instead of that cheapy feeling, you know, binding posts from the first version, little plasticky, nasty ones, this new one offers two sets of premium binding posts similar to the ones from some of Klipsch's more expensive offerings, allowing you to buy amp, buy wire, buy win, whatever you wanna do, which is a cool feature to have. Aside from the obvious, there were a few other upgrades that this speaker has been blessed with, like upgraded bracing inside the enclosure and adjustments to the crossover design to help improve the overall sound. Not that I felt the first iteration needed any help in that department because it definitely held its own. In the world of lower price Klipsch products, I felt the original 600M was the champion in that arena. However, it looks like Klipsch took any shortcoming it could find from the original and improved on it. These speakers, like their predecessors, aren't difficult to drive. They're eight ohms and rated at 94.5 decibels of sensitivity, which is a bit lower than the 96 decibels the originals were rated at. But when you cross that 91, 92 decibel threshold, speakers like these become very easy for almost any amplifier to drive without any issues or hesitation. For those that don't know what I am referring to with all these numbers, 94.5 decibels refers to how loud the speaker can play with one watt of power at one meter from the speaker. 94 and a half decibels is in between a lawnmower and a rock concert in loudness. So needless to say, you won't be using much more than a few watts of power with these speakers unless you're hosting a block party and by then by all means go nuts. The rated frequency response is 44 hertz to 25 kilohertz, which is one hertz lower than the original, meaning it's slightly bassier. 
which I of course take no issue with. In the next segment, I will review my measurements and see if they align with the ones rated by Clipsch. Attention all audiophiles and home theater enthusiasts. Today's video sponsor, Just Audio, is your one-stop shop for all things hi-fi. With one of the largest home audio stores on the East Coast, Just Audio features a variety of sound rooms, home theater rooms, and an extensive sales floor of top-notch hi-fi products. Whether you're looking for new, pre-owned, or even vintage hi-fi gear, you know what I'm talking about, those holy grail items, just Audio has it all. If you happen to not live on the East Coast, their website has an online shop and they ship direct. With the recent viral success of their YouTube channel helmed by Crazy Lenny, Just Audio has become a go-to source for hi-fi advice and amazing audio finds. So if you're looking to build or upgrade your home audio system, head over to Just Audio now. The link to their website and YouTube channel can be found in the description below. Don't miss out on the ultimate audio experience. The measurements were performed using REW and a U-Mic 1. As you can see from the graph, the frequency range was linear from the top end of 20 kHz down to around 38 Hz, where it just cascades down fairly quickly because of its ported design. The fact that it went down to 38 Hz proves that Klipsch rated these very conservatively. Upon my first listen, I knew they would measure way below the rated 44 Hz. The few peaks and nulls are a direct effect of the room. My goal is to someday acquire an anechoic chamber for these measurements, but for now, I have to do what I can with what I have. These measurements prove that, objectively, this should yield a very smooth and linear sound from these speakers. Let's find out if the measurements match this objective listening test. I have seen and heard a lot of mixed emotions online about the first versions of these speakers, and to be clear, I never measured them or had a chance to do serious evaluative listening. I do remember that they sounded really smooth with outstanding clarity and an overall pleasant sound. Speaking of sound, I have heard many people refer to Klipsch speakers as having a specific sound signature, which many are referring to the sound provided by the horn-loaded tweeters. I have heard it for myself and can attest that specific clip speakers in their line of speakers can come off as bright and forward in the mid-range and top end. I don't feel like the RP600Ms or their upgraded version demonstrate that stereotypical sound many people claim to this brand to have. Horn-loaded tweeters are often considered to have a bright and forward sound signature in the treble and mid-range frequencies. This is due to the high efficiency and dispersion of the horn, which can make the high frequency and mid-range sound more pronounced and forward compared to other types of tweeters. Depending on your preferences, this can be an advantage and or a disadvantage. For some, a horn-loaded tweeter's bright and forward sound can be perceived as being detailed and energetic and lifelike. For others, the sound may be seen as too bright or harsh, especially when playing music with a lot of high frequency content or just listening for an extended period of time causing some fatigue. This is all a matter of personal taste and will depend on how you perceive and consume the music through this type of speaker. Since I had a bit of time to play around with the RP600M2s, I tried them out with several different configurations. My favorite thus far though is pairing these with my Amp Camp Amp Mini, which can only actually produce 5 watts of power. This should be a testament to the fact that these speakers are incredibly easy to drive. I absolutely loved how they sounded paired with this amp. I used my good buddy Mike Galusha's custom preamp as the control. I used my vintage Magnavox CD player as a source, utilizing its TDA1541 DAC chip. This had excellent synergy for me, guys. This, that doesn't mean they sucked in other configurations, because they didn't. I also tried them with my Lingdorf integrated amp and my Purify Eval 1 amp, and they were just standout speakers in every arrangement I put them in. These speakers had incredible bass response. They outperformed their predecessors, showing a bit more aggression to the low end frequencies, which is awesome. I feel pairing them with a subwoofer though, crossed over at around, I don't know, 60 to 80 Hertz would be a huge benefit to cover all of those lower frequencies and provide that full range sound. The mid range for me is a fundamental part of the sound. Actually, the, probably the most important part of the sound. It was super relaxed, easy to listen to for long periods, no fatigue, and I can turn it up quite a bit and not need to turn it down. You have no idea how awesome that is, and you also would be surprised how many times I've had to turn down the volume with other components. As previous designs have demonstrated, this version lacks the clip sound, which is okay for me. However, a slight bump is happening in the higher frequencies 
giving specific instruments and vocal ranges a little push, which is fine because it's not in your face and maintains excellent clarity throughout the listening experience. Overall, I would say these do in fact sound better than their predecessors. The new RP600M version 2 is a perfect match for a person who wants a pair of speakers that only takes up a little bit of space and wants immense value for performance. The cool thing about Klipsch is that they have aggressive sales throughout the year, and while those sales are in play, that would be the best time to strike. The RP600M2s are relatively new, so I don't know if they will go on one of their super sales anytime soon. However, for the price point of only $749 for the pair, I feel that's an excellent deal for the amount of performance these speakers are capable of. You can power them with just about any type of amplifier since it doesn't take much to push them, and aesthetically, I think they're pretty nice. If you're interested in more Klipsch gear, check out this video. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more of my reviews and content, please slap the like button and subscribe to the channel so you can tune in for more of my stuff. With all that said and done, I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.